Hey guys, um, we have had absolutely awful weather the past week or two over here in the UK. We've had 50 mile an hour winds. It's kind of just, <laughs> needless to say, there's been absolutely no flying. So I, I took a little bit of time to tackle something that's been on my list for a while, which is to try and improve how I can get the whole flight controller setup and everything into the Strix Goblin. Now, for any of you guys who have flown and built a Strix Goblin, it is an absolute pig to do your radio set install. I'll pick this up. This is what the guys at Strix kindly provide. I'll pop that a bit closer. You can see it's a little bit of a, a wooden tray. It's designed with some holes so you can get a flight controller mounting on it. It just is it's insufficient, in my opinion, for the job at hand. Now, I wanted to come up with something better as I'm building a second goblin at the moment. And um, I've been through iteration after iteration of design. Some of them have worked, some, well, you can see various options. I've got piles of these little bits of plastic which haven't quite worked. Now, let me pick up a Strix here and I'll try to show you what the problem is. So you can see we have the goblin here, fantastic model. But you, you have an option, you can either glue your flight controller down on the bottom or you could use that little mount which pops in on top of the um, tray on you, but you can probably see the problem I'm already having. How on earth do I get that in and do any work? And then once it's in, that's probably going to have to be glued down and I'm imagining. And then I can't actually do any work to get this thing to work. So <laughs> it's, you know what, there are easier ways to do this. So as I'm fixed and I can't change this very easily, I thought, well, let me try something different. And we have my lovely pink little prototype over here and um, beautiful pink. That's just what I happened to have in the filament at the time. But um, the idea, let me pop this down and I can show you. So the idea here is to turn things around a bit. Um, primarily for this, I'm using a Matek wing. Um, the F411, I think it is. Um, I'm using a Matic VTX and a GPS. So the idea, and if I, if I jump onto the um, screen here at the moment, I can actually show you what's going on here in the design program. So what we've got is essentially a couple of spars you can see on the drawing over here. And the idea is to mount the flight controller on the front of this 3d printed plastic that you see over here on the top would be the vtx on a couple of standoffs and behind it the gps now i'm not so worried about things like the receiver or anything like that because that can get shoved right down into the tail and the speed controller will end up sitting below on the bottom of the fuselage so you can kind of get the idea of what i've got on the prototype now the long and short of it, if we take a look at the better plastic which I've dropped on the floor. Well, there we go. So, the long and short, I've now printed out a prototype here, and we can kind of see what it's all about. As I was saying, flat controller will sit on the front there, VTX will sit on the top, and the GPS will get put on the back. And I'd probably bond them with, um, I, I find dual aquatic silicon pretty good for that sort of thing um it's kind of a black silicon which dries quite quickly but in a thin layer it bonds incredibly well to the plastic and the two parts and if you ever want to separate it get a screwdriver underneath it go pop and off it comes so that's kind of what i'll probably do for that but the proof is whether or not this can all fit and hold it Oh, and I also forgot to mention, I've got this hole over here because the idea here is that any of the wires and things for the servo leads, I could route through and just cable tie onto those holes. Now, the real proof here, as we see, does it fit? Um, and how easy? You know, there, there's a couple of things again. We've got it. You'll notice that one clips that way and that one clips on the top. So it's going to be a little bit of a, a fiddly thing to get in play. So... <laughs> We'll see how it goes. Now, in we go, and <laughs> that's a result. It's always quite nice when a first test fit actually works. Now, let's see, 
There it is. It's kind of latched on. Now the real test here. You know what? This is pretty secure. If I try lift this, because of the clamp on the rear it doesn't lift. And if I pull it, because of the clamp on the front it doesn't lift. However, if I take it and I get my finger underneath it and just pop the back. Now, can I get this off? And off it comes. That might actually just do it. Now, the idea here obviously is that I can get the guts of the system out for soldering on it and working on it. And um, I'll try this again. It's not so easy, if I'm perfectly honest. Not as easy as I'd like it. There we go. Yeah. So the idea is obviously that I can get this in and out with all the gear on it, which um, is actually what the next step is going to be. And um, I think once I've wired this up and sold it all together, I'll do a follow-up video to show you whether or not I have or haven't had any success on this. Um, and if it does work, great. You know, I'll plug the files up in Thingiverse so you can have a look. In fact, I might even pop them up early, um, as well as a um, mount which I've done which suits the um, Caddx Turtle for the nose, which kind of is a matching pair to this. So I'll pop some links below for that. But um, I'm hoping <laughs> this might make my next Goblin install a little bit neater, a little bit easier to maintain. Because at the end of the day, if I can pull the gear out to do any work on it, brilliant, just in case something desolders. And then with the way the flight controller is mounted on the front, it actually means that the USB lead on the F4 board is actually kind of directly exposed exactly where I want it. Um, in fact, let me pop this out. There's one other thing I forgot to mention that my intention is to do, but I haven't quite got into. You may see on this here, there's a couple of holes over here. And what I'm thinking about doing there is a front plate, which will go over the front with just a hole over the USB connection for the flight controller. And that's just to provide kind of an impact zone. So I'll do a couple of standoffs and a plate on the front. So that, you know, to be honest, the battery's going to fly forwards in a crash, but it's really just stops that board being kind of exposed to the world and the cables and things will all be hidden behind the plate, which for longevity probably will be the best thing. But um, yeah, so that, that's kind of what I've been up to, you know, among the rest of my, my daily life, which is somewhat busy at the moment. But um, as I said, I will pop a link up to these and hopefully in the next couple of days, you will get a video showing you that it has worked and well, if it doesn't work, I'll do another video and show you the problems I've had. And I guess at that point, there will be a natural iteration of the design. Um, and maybe by the time I go live, I won't be doing it in neon pink. I'll do it in something slightly more, maybe a, a black ABS or something. I don't know. Anyway, cheers, guys. Hopefully the weather improves a little bit soon because I'm desperate to get out flying. Um, see you soon.